What's up guys? Scotty Z coming at you with an EVT video. I'm going to take you from start to finish on a VPS kit, uh, diagnostics, and repair. Alright, we're going to put some air in the system. Putting air into our air tanks, but we don't have to start the truck and run it. Once you hear the air dryer pop off, you're at 120. There it goes. And close the valve. Just make it there. That's all we are VTS looking. Got some soapy water. So yeah, so this is a real common repair. Now you'll have uh, air leaking from your pump shifter. So this is an air actuated pump shifter. It's basically what engages and disengages your drive line. So when you're at a scene of a fire, you shift it into pump mode and this shaft pops out and then disengages this rear section. So, let me grab some tools and start pulling this thing apart and rebuilding it. All right, so we're gonna start taking these air. All right, give myself a little bit more room to work here. So first thing I did is I pulled this cotter pin out. This is your manual pump shift cable. So if you're ever in a situation where your air is not working and you still need to put it or take it out of pump mode, you can do it with a cable on the pump panel. Just a pull handle. So I'm gonna back these off, these four bolts. I'm sorry, there's two bolts and then there's two nuts. So I'm gonna back them off a little bit. I'm not gonna take them all the way out because there's a plunger inside of here that I'm gonna pop out with air. Okay, so we got our air lines pulled off. Um, front air line pushes the shaft inwards, locks the rear drive line for road mode. Rear one, air is applied. Air is applied, puts it into pump mode. That's in pump mode. Put it in pump mode. We've already pulled the cotter pan out of our manual pump shifter. Um, pull this two piece shaft out. Usually it's an 11 16 wrench, and you can turn it right here. I've already got it loose, obviously. Put your shaft out, set it aside. Sometimes that shaft, you need to check it. It'll get scored up and then it will never seal and you need to put a new shaft in there. So we need to get this plunger out. Pull these off to show you what's under there. So this is the plunger, circular disc. It's got, it's got a seal on the outside. I'm gonna put this plate back on. We gotta get that plunger out. I'm just gonna put this nut and bolt in there partially. So that when we when blow this disc out, it doesn't come all the way out, shoot across the shop or anything. Just kinda keep your fingers clear. Alright. Pull 
this off. I don't know if you can see there, but that seal is rolled. That's initially where our big leak was coming from. Right off. The disc out. Sometimes you gotta be careful with that disc too, because it's just aluminum. A soft metal, you can like chip it if you're like trying to pull it out with a screwdriver or something. Alright, back to the bench portion. Uh, we got our EPS kit by Hale. They have all of our seals in it. So our main two. We have two seals in here. And you have a seal right here. Oh. To a pick or a pocket screwdriver. Roll that off. Inspect your groove line where your seal goes. Clean it up a bit. This one's gonna have two different, it's gonna have one seal, and it's gonna have it's, it's like a seal, but it's um it's more of like a hard plastic. It's more of like a guide to kind of keep this seal in place. Yeah, that's what happened, it rolled. seals. This one's yellow. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put some seal glide on these. Installed on the plunger. Rag has a metal shaving in it. That felt good. Move the other two seals. So the regular seal goes into the back of the plate. There's a cavity in there. It's big enough for these two seals. You can kind of just that one up to a little bit and then it has like this lip so the fatter part's gonna go on to the seal and this is gonna stick through the hole of the plate just gonna work it in there like that make sure this one doesn't roll on you if it can it can roll all right so that's basically it for this plunger and the plate oh i'm sorry there is one seal right here You can pull the whole. You can pull this whole 
assembly off and there's another seal a couple of seals behind it um, but generally it's just this front portion that leaks so that's all we're going to be rebuilding today Push it in evenly on the each side. Put your plate on. Put your shaft in. It's a half inch wrench. Snug it up. It doesn't have to be super tight. Shaft here, eleven sixteenths. Now we can put it back into road mode. Blow some air in the front side. And I'll wait to hook this back up until we connect our airlines back up. The gray goes to the front. Blue goes to the back. Move the back one first. Nine sixteenths. Do the back first. That way the front line's not in your way. The little things you don't think about sometimes. The first time you do it, it kind of pisses you off. Oh, just just things you don't think about. Put the front line back on. Snug it up. I know we'll put a manual pump shift cable back on. Generally good practice to use a new cotter pin every time. Give me a second, we'll get another car pin. All right, back with a new cotter pin. Stick it in. Bend it. Flip it. Bend it. It's not going anywhere. All right, let's test it out. Build some air pressure, see what we got. All right, so now we have 120 PSI on our air tanks. Um, and we'll spray the water before our air leak was coming around the shaft seal. So, no more leaks. That's how you do a VPS kit. Hey guys, this is just the first video of what I hope to be many. So if you liked what you see, subscribe, comment, share, like. Thanks guys.